Bronny James, uh, he will survive. Uh, he's going to stay in the NBA draft. He's not going anywhere. He's not going back to school. His agent, Rich Paul, told ESPN that he has had a strong pre-draft process. His draft range is wide. He can. He's a really good prospect who has a lot of room for growth. That's why I'm not doing a two-way deal. Every team understands that. It's crazy James. talk, too, though. Like, it's crazy talk. Like, your your player is not that good, and you're making these demands. Like, come on. Yep. Like, be, be happy he gets drafted. You should be happy any other any, – if you're representing a player like that, one year in college, four points a game, not that big, not a great – you're just hoping he gets drafted. Uh-huh. Not you're making demands – like, because he's LeBron's kid. You feel like I could do that. Yep, and that's what, exactly what Michelle Sa- Smallmon said today on Unsportsmanlike on ESPN. Now we're seeing a little bit more of the truth. Now we're seeing the demands that potentially could come with Bronny James and the fact that he isn't just the 54th-ranked prospect. He isn't just a guy who averaged 4.8 points per game in his collegiate career. And you're right, because of health issues, we don't know what the entire body of work would be. But isn't that the point? That it's a mm-hmm. very incomplete picture of who Bronny James is as a basketball player and how it will translate to the NBA. I think most players who are in this position with that resume would never be able to put a statement like that out, of never be able to decline invitations for workouts without there being some negative repercussions. But this is not your average player. And that in itself is a red flag for any team about working out Bronny James, right? Like already you're kind of getting this idea. This kid could be a headache. They're like, this kid could present problems. This kid could come in with unreasonable demands for a player of his stature, but because his last name is James and because he's LeBron James's kid, He's got this sense of entitlement, like he's gonna he's gonna flex and Remember he's gonna do family? all this stuff. Remember the ball family? Sure. Oh God, what a headache yes. that would be. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Nobody wanted to draft the kids because of the father. Yep. You know, you're always Alonzo and Lamelo, and I can't remember the other kids' name. There were three of them, but um, you know, so you that, that was always a concern with the with him. I don't. You know, if I'm the kid, I, I want to make my own path. I want to work out for everybody. If I really believe in myself, you want me you you want me to work. I'll t- that's a privilege to go work out for a team. Should be a privilege. A team invites you to a workout. You should want to go work out to prove yourself. Now, unless the agent, and a lot of times this happens, the agents don't want overexposure of the player. The more teams see a player, the more they can pick them apart. So agents don't like exposing players if they don't have to, because if they don't perform well, that could really hurt them. So maybe that's the feeling there. Like, hey, listen, I know the kid's not that good. I'm going to put him up against... I'm going to put him in a group with six other point guards. He's not going to shine like they do. Yeah. And maybe that's part of why he's doing this. In this story, which kind of has a feel, almost like a propaganda feel to it, it was on ESPN.com. They say really, really nice things about Chris Paul, about Bronny James, probably not Chris Paul, about Bronny James. Like nice thing, like almost the kind of stuff that's designed to prop him up. For example, Uh, Quote, James, the number 54 prospect in the ESPN 100, has had a strong pre-draft process and elevated his standing from fringe to draftable prospect. Here's another one. He participated in a heavily attended pro day at the Lakers practice facility last week where he again demonstrated his highlight reel explosiveness and improving perimeter shooting ability. It all kind of has this feel of build them up, build them up, build them up to, to justify drafting a player that up until about two weeks ago nobody really thought was draftable. Nobody really thought was good enough to be drafted. Now, of course, everyone's going to wonder, does the team that draft him is LeBron going to follow suit? And that's where the interest is locally here. We talked about this earlier in the show. It still feels highly suspect that LeBron James would take a veteran's minimum to come play for the Phoenix Suns. How about just a car payment? They, he's not taking a vet minimum. A car payment? Not a LeBron mortgage James payment? Is, I'll take a mortgage payment. Mortgage he's, not payment. Playing for, okay. he's not paying for a vet minimum. LeBron James is not playing for the vet minimum. You know, he's not leaving $50 million on the table. It's just like it's unheard of. To do that, I don't see that happen. I think he stays with the Lakers. Um, I don't think the Suns think that that's going to happen either. I don't think the Suns feel like LeBron's going to come play for a vet minimum contract. So, where you know, it sounds good. It's a good story. It's good to speculate yeah. on. It's fun. It's, people are getting a lot of talk about it. What's going to happen with Bronny? LeBron isn't. 
you know, ending any speculation by saying I'm staying with the Lakers. He could opt out and resign. Like, so there's a lot of stuff that, you know, this hasn't been nipped in the bud. No, and, and it is. It's fun to talk about, and it's fun to think about. But I, 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 think, I think a couple of things. I think, number one, what makes this story interesting is Bronny choosing to work out only for a couple of teams and the Suns being one of them. That, that's what makes this story compelling. It's like he's choosing where he wants to go, and based off of what he's chosen, that's you wonder if the dad follows. Okay, so that's number one. So far, best we know, he's only chosen the Lakers and the Suns. Let's see but, if he works out in a group or privately. Does he try to make it like an, like um, college football players? Oh, I'm going to have you my pro day. I control the environment. I control everything. I'll work out for you one-on-one, -on -one, and I want to work out with a group of five other players. Does he start to say yes to other teams? Does he start to get the idea that that, you know, it, like I, that That to me is what he chose the Suns. He specifically chose the Suns as a team he wanted to work out with. They need a with. point guard. Well, I, maybe, but there's also, aren't there better more ready-made point guards in this draft? The Suns could get at number 22 sure. than Bronny James. Okay, so... Sure. Then the other that's part of this... a major reach at 22. Major reach. A Ma major reach. Major, now, that's the other part of the story is if you know, if you're the Suns and you're convinced there's no way LeBron's coming here for the Vets minimum, then you have to decide if Bronny James himself is worth number 22 overall because it seems to me that as much upside as he might have, if you're going to stay at 22 and draft a player, you need somebody that's way more pro-ready now than... Brawny James, right? Like you, you've got a win now expectation, and if you're drafting a 22, you better take a win now player. That ain't Brawny James. That is not Brawny James at all. I don't, I don't think he's helping anybody win basketball games next year. Now I talk to you know teams around the league, and you know I get you know reports and stuff on some of these guys, and um, I look at work, work him out, see if you like him, and you like. I would think he'd be more of a project. I would think he'd be like, yep. here's a kid. I like him. I like his athleticism. He's physical. I'm going to draft him and try to develop him for a little while, see what happens. And I ain't taking a project at number 22 if I'm the Suns. Now, I might trade 22 for a bunch of second-round picks that give me future ammunition for other deals, right? Like I, I, But if I'm staying at 22, I'm not taking a project. I, I don't, I've got no time for a project. I've got Kevin Durant, 36 years old, two years left on his deal. Bradley Beal making a fortune. Devin Booker making a fortune. A brand new. I'm in full on win now mode. I'm not in wait and see mode with a draft pick. You know, so you, you take somebody who wins now. This this feels like it's already jumped a shark a little bit. LeBron, the Suns, Bronny. It all it already feels. Maybe I'm wrong. It already feels like, yeah, no, it ain't going to happen. It was fun to talk about for a couple of days, but it ain't going to. If they thing. take him at 22, I wouldn't be shocked if they turned around and traded him to the Lakers for like a couple of second round picks. And that might happen too. Two or three second round picks. Yeah. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.